What is going on guys? Welcome back to another video. Today we are going to be using a Harbor Freight dual action polisher, which I got right here from Harbor Freight, obviously, to polish my Mustang. As you guys can see, I'll show you guys right now, Let's see if the lighting's bad. Uh, you guys can see all the swirl marks on here and all like the paint defects. So today I'm going to be trying to get this out of here and see if I could just smooth out my paint and get rid of all these nasty swirl marks that show in the sunlight. I'll be using the Chemical Guys Hex Logic cutting pad, the orange cutting pad, Chemical Guys Hex Logic light to medium polishing pad, and the Adams Polishes correcting polish and the finishing polish, along with Chemical Guys polishing pad cleaner and conditioner. So I'm going to start with the orange cutting pad here. All right, so obviously before you guys like just dive into polish your car, you can't do that. You gotta first wash your car and then clay bar your car to remove any of the contaminants or anything. I already did that just to save time on the video. I don't wanna waste your guys' time where you guys watch me wash and clay, my, clay bar my car. I'm sure all you guys know how to do that. So we're gonna jump right into polishing my car. You'll wanna put about, see how I got the hexes here because I have the hex logic pad. You'll wanna put about four dots the size of the hex on your pad. You want to. You don't want to just go straight into it. You want to kind of put blotches and dab it around in the area you're gonna work. And you guys don't want to. You don't want to work on like a whole hood or a whole fender. You want to work in small areas so you can make sure you get all the swirl marks out and make sure it's all done properly. So to start, you're gonna want it on your lowest setting. So mine goes all the way up to six. The Harbor Freight one goes from six. Starts at one. Goes to six. So I'm gonna start at one, just to work it in. And you want to go nice and slow, back and forth motion. You don't want to go super fast, otherwise you're not going to get a good paint correction. And then once you get it all worked in the paint, you want to crank it up to your highest speed setting. Nice and slow, really work it into the paint. All right, so once you work the polish into your paint really well, as you can see, it's a very fine glaze. It's not like blotchy or there's not a lot of spots. You're gonna wanna take a microfiber rag or towel and polish it off, buff it off. If there's areas that need to be gone over more, as you guys can see, it did a pretty good job. And then, and then repeat the exact same process we just did with putting the four dots on the pad, working it from speed one all the way up to speed six and keep working in tiny little areas. All right, so a little status update right now. We have gotten almost all the car done besides half of this door and this quarter panel right here. As you guys can see, the, heavy, the correcting polish 
has done an amazing job getting all the swirl marks out or almost all of them. Obviously this is a 10 year old car, actually 11 year old car, so you're not gonna get everything out, but it's got the majority of the swirl marks out. And just to give you guys an idea how long you should spend on each step, we've been correcting, we've been using correcting polish, just correcting polish on the car for almost two and a half hours now. So it takes a while, you guys. This is not a fast process. This is not something you wanna speed through. You wanna go slow, make sure you get everything done right. Otherwise, you're gonna have bad results and so you're not gonna be very happy with it. All right, so we're gonna talk a little bit about how hard you guys should push when you're polishing, because I know a lot of you guys are gonna have questions on that. So you don't wanna push so hard that the, the polisher shuts off, because I'll show you here. I'll put it on like a small, low setting for an example. If you push like this, you can hear how hard you can hear how hard the polisher is working. That's literally doing no good for your paint. You're just gonna put burns in your paint and it's gonna come off on the pad. And if you have it, to, if your pressure is too light, like this, like see I have no pressure right now, you're gonna get a lot of spray up, like here. You're gonna get a lot of spray and it's gonna go all over the place. So you don't wanna press too hard to where the polisher is burning your paint, but you don't wanna be too light to where it's spraying everywhere and literally doing nothing to your paint. You wanna have just a light, even pressure on it. Set it down, just press a little bit on it, not too much, and let the polisher do the work, you guys. That's why you're using the polisher, is so this could do the work and not you. All right, again with the speed, first you're gonna to wanna to just dab it out in the area you're working. And also, like you said before, don't work in big areas. This is about as big as you're gonna to wanna to, to work. Cause if it's too big, you're gonna start missing stuff and it's gonna just be a huge mess. So start out on your lowest speed setting. Just work the polish into the paint. Just, just so you don't have any spray. This is literally just so you don't have overspray all over your car. Just get a light even coating all over the surface you're working on. And once everything is coated, kick it up to the high speed. Kick it up to the highest, or kick it up to the middle of the highest your polisher goes. Eventually work your way up to where it's the highest your polisher will go. So mine's six, like I said before. And when you're polishing, don't go fast. If you're going fast, you're gonna do no good for your paint. You wanna go slow. This is a slow process. You need to work it slow. I'll show you right now exactly how fast you should be going. That was even a little bit fast, but you get the idea. You want to go nice and slow, even, overlap. Don't do a swipe and then come over and go down because you're going to get lines and miss spots. Overlap it by half and go up and down, up and down, up and down, and then come back and go over and up, over and up like that. Do that two to three times, and then once you get a really light haze to the point where there's almost no polish there, then take a microfiber towel and wipe it off and see if there's any spots you miss or need to touch up. All right, so we just finished using the uh, correcting cutting compound, whatever you guys want to call it. I'll give you guys a quick look. It came out really nice. If you guys take your time, follow everything I'm saying, you're gonna get great results just like I have so far. My paint is literally looking like glass. Like it is literally like a mirror. So now we're gonna go over the car with the light, walk around, see if there's anything we missed, anything that we should go over one more time before we head into the finishing compound, which will remove any very minor swirl marks or scratches. The cutting compound is used to take out the deeper swirls and scratches. The finishing is more just to kind of touch it up and touch up the things you missed that aren't as bad as it was originally. All right, so we are switching over to the HexLogic light medium polishing pad and going to be switching over to the finishing polish from Adams Polishes. Same thing as before, for about nickel size, dime size drops. And since it is a dry pad, so you don't burn your paint, you're gonna wanna dab it in the area you're gonna work, and then 
Just put a little bit extra on there just because it is a dry pad. Just to prevent your paint from getting any damage that you don't want to put on your paint. Dab that in. Make sure you're on your lowest speed setting. Start working it in. As you guys can see, my pace from the cutting compound to the finishing compound did not change. So you still want to go light to medium pressure, nice and slow with the polish to do the work. Don't push too hard, don't do too light, because I went a little light, and you guys can see I have overspray everywhere. You guys want to avoid that because it's a mess, it's not fun to clean up. So light to medium pressure, nice and slow with the polish to do the work, both compounds. All right, guys, we just finished up the finishing compound, and this is four hours later. It is like a mirror. It is so, so shiny and so clean. I'd say 90% of the swirl marks are out of my car. Like look at the reflection. You can see everything on the wall. You can see me with the camera. It came out incredible. This is what just a little bit of work and some time will get you. It'll get you great results. Just take your time. Pay attention to what you're doing. Don't rush through it, and you're gonna get amazing results just like this because this came out incredible. Honestly, guys, this was my very first time using a dual action polisher or any polisher at all. Honestly, like I have never used a polisher on my car, I've only hand waxed it. So, this is my first polisher, my first time using it. And I watched a bunch of tutorials on YouTube, looked up a bunch of stuff online, uh, followed everything that I read online and got amazing results. And everything that I read online and everything I did worked. So if you guys are watching this video, follow everything I'm saying and you should get the same results I did because I got incredible results. And this is my very first time ever using a polisher or even attempting to paint correct or polish my car. So as long as you pay attention to what I'm saying, pay attention to tutorials on YouTube and look it up and just know what you're doing before you get into it, you're gonna get amazing results. If you guys want to see a full review on this, I'm going to do a full review on this, I think, this weekend. Just talking a little bit more about it, the features, and what I like about it and what I don't. If you guys want to see that, comment down below. So that is going to be it for today's video, you guys. If you guys enjoyed today's video and found it helpful and you guys are go out and do your own car, smash that like button. Comment down below anything I did wrong or I missed because this is, again, like I said, my very first time doing this. I'll try to give you guys all the tips that I used, that I found that worked for me. And if I missed something or did something wrong, comment it down below. If you guys want to see the full review on the Harbor Freight Dual Action Polisher, also comment that down below. And if you're new here and want to see more content like this, featuring Mustangs, cars, dirt bikes, snowmobiles, all that stuff, consider hitting that subscribe button, and I will catch you guys in tomorrow's video. Peace!